So if you guys have your, your NEC code book, could you please go to page um, 153, page 153. Page 153 and be looking at this particular one. Be looking at this particular one, table. Okay, I know some of you guys have seen this table, others have not. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to take maybe an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and go over how to size cables for residential. I'm going to focus on residential. How do, how do you derate? How do you use the table ambicity in an EC code book? Um, and so forth. So before we go ahead and start, guys, how many of you guys have seen this table? I know you guys have seen it, right? You've seen it, Tana, more or less. Man, you have not seen it. When it comes to the NEC code book, guys, have in Article 300, has all the wiring methods approved by the code, which will be adopted by different state to be the law of the land for us in the US. So table 310.15B16, if you guys don't have the NEC code book, write your cell phone book. I'm going to PDF this one too. The notes that I'm going to write about these tables are so important that will help you as a designer from now in the residential as well as in the commercial. This table that you're looking at is called table 310.15B7. Before you go ahead and start with this table, it has you have to understand a few things about it. Um, and I'm going to go directly. There you go. Slightly less. Okay, instead of 200, maybe 150. Okay, so I'm going to go highlight all of it. The first thing I would like you guys to read, when you read about this table, 310.15B16, you're going to understand for this project, the project that we're using, the residential project, you will be using this table. Did you guys hear me? There is limitation for this table. The limitation for this table, the ambicity, the limitation for this table is the following. And I'm going to highlight it. When you read conductors type 4, can you see the voltage right here? What's the voltage? 122.40. If your voltage is other than 122.40, can you use this table? No. Number one. Number two, single phase. If your, if your system is other than single phase, can you use this table? Adam? No. If your system is other than dwelling, can you use this table? No, so commercial building, don't even think about it. Single phase, 120, dwelling. You can use it for service. Can you guys see the word service? Or for feeders. Can I use it for feeders? I can't emphasize. These are the single most important things about this particular table. And Karen, look at it carefully because in 2014, they got rid of it. <laughs> so I'm teaching you something that it will be obsolete and literally July 1st of 2013, when you guys graduate. Obsolete as in this table will not exist, but the concept of this table will continue to, to run. So this is how we use this table. The apartment building that you guys have. Let's take the apartment building. Let's draw a line, a right there. Here's my main panel, and here's a bunch of panels coming out of this. Coming out of this, bunch of panels. Panel one, panel two, panel three. And this is my main panel one. I want you guys to look right now and tell me, Chad, we fully understand each one of these boxes represent this one. So when I say this is my main panel, these are three sub panels. Cool? Matthew, does it make sense? These are the boxes that we're dealing with. Okay, so with this, here's my P, this is my P1. This will be my panel two, panel three, panel four. Four panels in an apartment building, and I need to size these panels. Size these panels. Okay, the voltage system for this is 240-120 volt, and it's single phase. Single phase. So, single phase. Can I use this table? Yeah, single phase. 24120, and it is for a dwelling. That building is for a dwelling. Can I use this table? Absolutely. Okay, now let's throw a couple of numbers on amps. Let's just say this was 400 amp. These, um, let's just say this was 100 amp. This was 200 amp. 
This was 300 M. Each one of these. So these are all circuit breakers, main circuit breakers that's feeding three panels. And this is the main circuit breaker for the main panel. Could that happen all the time in an apartment building? Now your job, math, my friend, is to go size these feeders. Size these feeders. That's going and feeding each and every one of these uh, uh, these tables. Look how easy that would be. Look how easy that would be. Okay, let's start with the 400 M. 400 M. Here's my 400. What size conductor do I need? Copper. Can you see the copper or aluminum? So typically we pick copper, but if you want aluminum, is so what size conductor copper do I need? 400 kcm. And Matt, I know you probably haven't introduced to the sizes of conductors. In the U.S., we size conductors based on on KCM, a um, thousand circular, they call it circular mill, that represent the cross-sectional area of the conductor. That's it. That's it. Did you? Okay, you got you got a few things. Okay, so when I say KCM, you understand what KCM. Awesome. So after 4 out. AWG, American Wire Gauge, is start going into KCM. Cool. So 400 KCM. So these conductors right here that come into this will be in. Okay, now how many conductors do I need? I have three phase. I have single phase. Single phase 241, 20. How many conductors? Two hot and a neutral. Three conductors. So I need two hot and a neutral, three conductors. Now who's that? I can't answer you right now. <laughs> Not important. Okay, so uh, remember, how many conductors do I need? Three conductors. Why three conductors? A hot, a neutral, and a ground. A hot, a neutral, uh, two hots, and a neutral. So I'm going to go here and pull myself three conductors in a conduit. What size conductor? 400 kcm. See how easy that is? So you grab yourself a conduit. And you pull three conductors. Each one of these conductors is 400 kcm. Now you can derate the neutral. We'll get into derating the neutral later. But for the time being, we, why did why it's 400? Because the MEC code book says if the surface or the feeder is this amp, the conductor will be this size. Any comments? I want you guys to give me a thumbs up that we know how to use this table. Cool? Next. Let's go to the each size each and every one of these apartments. So let's now take this one. It is 900. What size conductor? Number four. How many? Three conductors. Number four. Let's go to this guy. Um, this guy is, uh, what's the 200 amp? It is my 200 amp. What size conductor? Two out. So this will be a three conductor and a two out. And the last one would be um, I have 300, here's my 300, 250. So my, this will be three conductors, 250 kcl. That's how easy it is to use this table. Any comments, guys, any questions? See how easy it is? That's how you use this table. I can't emphasize that you can use it. Can you guys see the restrictions about using it? These are all restrictions. I like to always start with the restrictions. Restrictions on using this table. For this particular project that we are in, Matt, we will be using this table. Why? Because we have an apartment building. And it's a single phase 240. Next project, 28123 phase, and the project after, 48277. Can we use this table? No. This is for the babies. This table is for babies, for you know people who do residential mostly. Can I use it for apartment buildings? Yes. Can I use it for homes? Yes. Okay. Any comments, guys, about using this table? Now, just a quick reminder: if you if you want to pull aluminum conductor, why would you pull aluminum conductor? Cheaper. Lighter, cheaper. That's what aluminum is. If you pull the aluminum conductor, can you guys see what the sizes that would be? Everybody can see what sizes that would be? If that was to be an aluminum for that system. Any comments, any questions about how to use this table? Comments, questions. Now here's my question for Karen and everybody else. Can I use this table for grand circuits? 
Let this say brand circuit. It says service. And Peter, do you see brand circuits? To understand the code, guys, you have to understand there are three circuits dear to your hearts and dear to mine in an EC code book. The three circuits, you've got to understand them. Brand circuit, feeder, and service. Service, here's the service, bringing the power from Excel into my building. Feeders, distributing the power inside the building. Brand circuits is coming out of here and feeding the light or receptacle. That's what brand circuits are. Can I use this table to size bright circuits? No. no. Why? Does it say bright circuits here? Okay. That's what I would like you guys to know about this table. Everybody understand? So later on, as we start, as you guys start sizing the systems for me, and I say go size your conductors, where are you going to go? To this table. To this table. Now, with this table, guys, you can size it. You can use um, uh, any type of these wires. Any type of these wires, you can use them. So, um, can you guys, for example, you can use a uh, uh, SE cable that's commonly used in dwellings. SE cable, uh, USC cable is also commonly used. These are the cables that they use. So, what they do, when they bring when you bring the power to your building there are two ways of bringing the power to the building and distributing one way is using cables the other way is using conduits and wires conduits and wires no problem you can bring thhhn thhw any of these installation wire if you're using cables these are the common se use or use dash two these are the common type of cables that you use so for example um, Derek, my friend, this 400 kCm, I don't know, I don't think they have it, but down here, the, three, the 2 watt, that could be a 2 watt SC cable. Or it could be three conductors, 2 watt in a conduit, EMT conduit, rigid, PVC. Can you guys assure me that you fully understand that this system can be sized with cables or with conduits and wires? When we size things, Matt, in the electrical industry, we have two options. Option number one, to use a cable. Option number two, to use a conduit and a wire. And it's up to you to use which option. We'll tell you which one is the best where. But in this case, these feeders here can be cables, US cables, SC cables, all of them, or can be a wire and a conduit, an EMT conduit. Typically, either EMT conduit with THHM conductors inside it, or an SC cable, an SC cable. Any question about this table, guys? Later on, you're going to do a load calculation for the commercial, for residential building. You're going to come up with sizes like these, and you're going to come to this table to size these feeders, and you're going to decide. I'm going to tell you from now on, for the building that we have, I would like you guys to use conduits and wires. We're going to bring a conduit, to this building, PVC conduit, fill it with the exact wires like this, 400 kcm, if it's the same size. We're going to take an EMT conduit from this box to this box, and we're going to fill it with that, these particular wires. So we're going to use conduits. Why conduits? We're engineers. Conduits are better protection for than SC cables. Uh, where would I use SC cable? Cheaper. Okay, so if it's an engineer department, might as well use conduits, EMT conduits. What's EMT conduits? You're looking at it right in there. That type of conduit, except it's going to be a little bit bigger to handle these, uh, these conductors. Any comments, any questions before I move this table and move to the next table? Anybody has any question about this table? When you leave the seven weeks that you were the chat, and when somebody said 310 or 15 B7, and you don't know it, it's like being from Minnesota and, and somebody say the Twins and you have no idea what team is, uh, uh, those guys. See how horrible that is in the electrical industry? Embarrassing. Embarrassing, right? Or the Twin Cities and say, what, Bloomington, Richfield? <laughs> that's, that's how basic this is. I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating there. That's how basic this table is. You don't know it, you don't belong in the electrical industry, literally. So you guys have one whole year with Chad to know it. Know it good. You know it now, you're done. 
Okay, I don't know how how clear it emphasize it for you guys and Steve. This is it. And it come when it comes to dwelling. When it comes to dwelling. Any comments, any questions about that? So how do you size? I'll give you guys a three examples right here, size in front of you. Why three conductors, two hot and a neutral? In a single phase in the US, we call it split phase system. We feed dwellings in split phase system. We give it two hot and a neutral. Why two hot and a neutral? There's just to give you an idea of how we feed from this table. Here's a utility transformer coming to you. This is 7200 volt coming to your house or your apartment. From this side, they give you a, a three wire system and they ground. Very, very important to understand this system. This is ground and they give you hot one, hot two, and a neutral. And gentlemen, these are the three wires that you're sizing. And this big fat fluffy thing here, this is the transformer that's sitting on the top of the pole coming to your house. From this side, typically 7200 volt. Don't mess with it. That's a high voltage. You know, from this side, it's hot one, hot two, and a neutral. And the voltage is what? 240 slash 120 volt. Um, and this is coming from phase A. Typically, the three phase system. The power system is three phase. So the utilities give you one phase of the power lines, right? At the top, they take that phase at the top of the pole, you see it coming, feeding a transformer sitting there. And there's a grounded conductor here tying to the, so that's the phase, that's the ground. And then from here, from the other side of the transformer, that's what you feed your apartment or your house. How many amps? Yeah. Amps, it depends upon the transformer they have. Yeah, amps are a function of the transformer. Typically, these, these are um, for dwellings and all this good stuff, single phase, it's 10 kVA. So if we take 10 kVA, take it, what's the calculator? 10 kVA divided by 7200. See how much amps of this will be seen. Nothing. So we take uh, 10,000 divided by 7200. <clears throat> what is it? An amp and something? 1.3 amps. All your load, beautiful load here, will be seen by the utility as 1.3 amps. Now we understand why they can feed the whole cities here and they're okay and they don't need conductors the size of Interstate 494 because they raise the voltage so high, the current goes so small to push more, more power into the buildings. Can I get you guys to understand? This system goes with this table, and that's how we use it. Cool? Before I leave it, last chance. OK, so that's, uh, let me see if I can take a snapshot of this. Uh, caption. All right, I think we got it. There you go. So I'm going to PDF this one, too, put it on the network, um, just in case. Cool? All right, so now, now that you guys um, Good. Let's go to another table. So we got this. You guys like the ability to write right on the code? Look nice. Yeah. I think it's uh I think it's cool. I wish I had it when I was in school. So okay, so let's go. Now this is I PDF the stuff that I wrote. I'll put it in the network for you so you don't if you forgot that table. This is the table 494, and I said 494 never to be to be a mess. Now, if this is your grandma table, the table I'm going to show next is your grandpa's table. They're both important, but grandpa has muscles. So this is your grandma's table, right? The one I want to show right now is your grandpa's table. If you forgot that one, you know you don't belong. If you forgot the second one, you don't exist, literally, in the electrical industry. Not just belong, you don't exist. So this is the baby table, right? Residential. We know how to do it. Let's go back into the next table. This is the table that you shall not, will not ever forget that table. Let's go directly into this. Um, okay, this table, 
It's called 310.15 B16. 310.15 B16 literally is like saying the state of Minnesota. And if somebody asks you about it and you have no idea, it's like you live in Minnesota and you don't know what the name of your state. Would that be harsh? Very harsh. This table is used for everything. And as of July 1st, 2014, next year, it will be also used for residential. The table that I showed you and I explained it to you guys, and you were happy about it, as of July 1st, 2014, that table will disappear. And this table will be the ruling table. Did you guys hear me? That's changing 2014, coming soon. So just FYI. Um, so everything that I told you is it's good until July 1st of 2014. After that, what happened? Huh? Absolutely. And branch circuits. Yeah. This table is used for the three very important tables um, um, carrying uh, circuits. Feeders, service conductors, feeders, and branch circuits. That's so important to understand. It's used for any type of system. Used for 24120, 28120, 480, 600, anything. So the first and the most important thing is, is the limitation on it. Can you guys see the voltage limitation here? The voltage. Two, up to 2,000, up and including 2,000 volts. Not more than three carrying carrying conductors. I will highlight this one. In a cable or in a conduit. In a cable or in a conduit or directly buried underground based on an ambient temperature of 30. Okay, well, 200. Um, these are the limitation of this table. Let's just talk about the limitation of this table before we go ahead and, and, and start. The table's name is 310 of 15B16. It's limited to 2,000 volt up to and including 2,000 volt. Okay, give me a voltage, 28123 phase, 24120 single phase, 24123 phase, 48277. All these voltages are covered here. Did you guys hear me? All the voltages are covered here. So I'm going to write, uh, this will be used, oops, no, we don't want to do that for you. There you go. I'm going to write here, uh, it will be used, okay, let's go down a little bit here. 240-120 volt. Um, it, should, it will be used 208 slash. Ouch, where did I go? No, with it. That's a problem when you start messing around with. There you go. Uh, Let's go right in here. Um, 480, 480 slash 277, 600 volt. These are typical voltages that we use, guys. Um, 208 slash 120 volt. Um, 240 slash 120. All these are three phase. These are three phase. And also you can use them for single phase, single phase, uh, 240 slash 120 branch circuit. For the branch circuit. Can I get you guys to understand that one? So this table is used for all these voltages as well as for single phase 241, 120 branch circuit. How about the feeders to the table before? Oh, before I forget, how about um, branch circuits also feeders, feeders and service, service conductors larger than, than 400. I forgot to mention, did you guys, do you remember the last table has a limitation how high you can go in the last table, 400? Now, what happened if your apartment building is 800 amp? Switch to this table. Did you guys hear me? The table that we've just covered is baby table. Up to 400, you use it. The residential, 240, 120. Higher than 400, you must come here. So that's why this is the table that you need to know. Any comments about this table, guys? I want to remind you, it's for three conductors in a conduit or in a cable. The ambient temperature, the ambient temperature is 30. If your ambient temperature is other than 30, then you have to durate. If your ambient temperature is other, if your conductors, if you have more conductors than three carrying conductors in a conduit, here's my conduit. One, two, three, 
here is phase A, phase B, phase C, more than three, what do you need to do? Derate. If your temperature, ambient temperature, ambient temperature equals 100 degree, degree Fahrenheit. Uh, well, Celsius, when they say, when they say uh, 30 degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit is 86. Say if it was 100 degree Fahrenheit. Can you use this table? Yes. What do you need to do? Derate. Before I move away from this table and start giving a, a couple of examples, do you guys understand the limitation of this table used for all the voltages, brand circuits and feeders and services? Used for 241-20 used brand circuits for, as well as feeders and service if you are larger than what? 400. You default here. If the ambient temperature is 86 or 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit, use it as is. If it's more or less, you can derate. You shall derate. If the conductors are more than three hot conductors in a conduit like this, you shall derate. Any comments, guys? Any questions about this? Okay, now let's go see if you guys know how to use this table. Take a snapshot of that. Okay, now everything that we highlighted, guys, will stay. Um, that's a nice thing about smart board. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of all this junk. Like I said, everything that I highlighted, it will be PDF, not for the network for you. That's a nice thing about the smart board. Okay, now we know that how to use this table, where to use it. Uh, the limitation of this table. Now let's go ahead and use this table. When you use this table, guys, the single most important thing to know about this table is I have, well, there are two sections in it. Before from the get go. This, the first section right in here is for copper. You have the copper and you have the aluminum. So you, you have to decide which, which size are you going to use. Cool? There is the copper and aluminum. Clear? So we have my copper, I have my copper, my aluminum here, or copper clad aluminum, and I have, my, I have my copper. So major decision you're going to use is copper. As engineers, what do we prefer? Copper. Why copper? Copper is safer, smaller wire, safer to work with, better conductivity. Okay, now as contractors, putting the contractor's head, what do we prefer? Aluminum. Why aluminum? Cheaper easier to work with, lighter, bent better as cables, okay? So, but all the engineering projects that I worked on, especially commercial industrial buildings, we specify feeders as copper feeders. Again, if you end up working for uh, for a company and they want to use aluminum because they, want the, the, they have a customer who cannot afford, so you start cutting cost and using aluminum conductor. That's safe enough, yes sir? Yeah. Uh, the aluminum, absolutely. Again, unless the engineer, unless, now you're working for contract, unless the engineer tells you copper, copper. A lot of engineering firms I work with, granted I did hospitals, sport arenas, bigger stuff. Those guys, they like copper and they have money to pay for it. Uh, what was the building? Do you remember what type of building is that? Okay, okay. So they were pulling, I mean, you can, uh, aluminum right now is not like it's, it, I said copper is safer, but aluminum is also safe. The challenge with aluminum is you have maintenance, more maintenance on it. If you have a good preventative maintenance program in your facility, it can live forever. Utilities use them all the time. Okay, so our default though, it's going to be copper. So that's that's the the major the de decisive de factor. The second thing is okay. Now let's I'm gonna both. What I want to say, guys, is apply to both sides. Let's come to the copper side. You have three options in the copper side. You have a 60 degree, a 75, or a 90. And each one of these options, guys, have different ambacity for the same conductor. For example, let's go and take number. Um, let's take number one out. One knot can get you 
125 amps or 150 amps or 100, what's that? Can't see that. 170 amps. Can you guys see that, Kevin? I have one odd conductor. That conductor can carry 125, 150 on 170. So, Matt, are you confused? I used to be confused when I was in your shoes. Which one am I going to be using? Temperature of the conductor. Okay, very good point. So, which one am I going to be using? Temperature of the conductor is one very essential step. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the temperature of the conductor, the insulation. Okay, that's one very important step. One very, very important step. So we got ourselves, so based on insulation, I can use any one of these, uh, any, any one of these emphases. Okay, now, when we size conductor, guys, when you land your conductor, it's going to be landing on a bunch of lugs. Lug, lug, and this is conductor. When you, when you size your conductors, you will be landing them on lugs, torquing them on lugs. Now, based on the size of the lug, when you size the system, there is a temperature T for the lug, there is a T for the lug here, and a T for the temperature for the conductor. All these temperatures. You are, you are to size the conductor based on the lowest temperature. For example, suppose this was 60, <coughs> suppose this was 75, and suppose that this was 90. All of them degrees Celsius. Okay? Which temperature shall you use to size the conductor? Do you understand what the lugs are? We're going to torque them. Which I have three different temperatures. One lug is 60, one is 75, and one is 90. By the way, this is very common. Very common. This is where you start the crackers located here. This is where your equipment is tied. Oops. My equipment is tied here. Which temperature shall you be using? The lowest temperature. The lowest temperature. What's the lowest temperature? 60 degrees. So you're defaulting to where? So if that was one knot, what amp? What's the amp for one knot? 125. Did you guys hear me? Everybody can understand that one? It's a 125, no question asked. 125 for no question asked. Based on the logs. And the temperature of the conductor. Okay. Now the question would be, you're designing the equipment, you have no idea what the lugs are. No idea what the lugs are. The NEC code book guys give you defaults. Here's your default. Write them down and understand. Your defaults are the following. Take this. Your defaults. Let's start with your defaults. If your conductors, if your conductors are number one, all the way, this is default number one. If your conductor is number one and smaller, number one and smaller, and you have no idea what the lugs are, nobody told you anything, what's your default? 60 degree column, right here. 60 degree column. Any question guys about this one? 60 degree column. If your conductors are larger than number one, right here, all the way down, going all the way down, then your default is what? Your default to what? 75. Did you guys hear me? Take this. One out. No idea what the logs are. I don't tell you anything about the logs. One out. How much amp this one out under normal operating condition can carry? Normal operating condition. No durating, no temperature durating, or normal operating condition. One out can carry 150 down. They call it normal operating condition. No durating. Take this. Here, I have number eight. Under normal operating condition, number eight cannot carry more than 40 amps. 
normal operating condition. Did you guys hear me? Defaults. These are what I call them the defaults. When you're sitting in your office and designing, no idea what the logs are. Right? So what's your default? Your default is going to be if your conductors are 100 amp, uh, uh, if your conductors are number one or smaller, 60 degree column, more than number one, uh, more than number one, 75. That's your default. So write yourself so that it goes by conductors. So on the 60 degree, guys, I'm right here, um, number one or smaller. Number two, 100 amp or less. These are the default that you have to use 60 degree column. Number one or smaller. Take this, 60 amp panel. A 60 amp panel, 120, 240. What size conductor do I need for this 60 amp? Which column are you going to default to? 100 amp or less, where do you go? 60. Did you guys hear me? 100 amp or less, where do you go? To 60. No question asked. Okay, another default. An amp cable. An amp cable. Promise. You have a range. And you want to size for a range, raw mix. The range is 50 amps. What size conductor do you need for that 50 amp? Number six. Did you guys hear me? Everybody can see what the, what the advantages of. So if it's raw mix cable, if the conductor is number one or less, or if the ambicity 100 amp or less, you are to use the six and three cup. Unless they tell you about the logs, unless they tell you about the logs. Matt, does it make sense? If you guys understand this, like I said, this is it. This is the whole sizing business is based on that. Okay, now let's go to this table. When would I use this table? If the conductor is more than number one, or more than uh, 100, 100 amp. So I have a piece of equipment, panel, 150 amp panel. Size me a conductor for 150 amp panel. Normal operating condition. Okay, Chad, 150 amp panel is right in here. It's a one. Can you guys see that? Everybody can see that? So when would you use 60? You use 60 if your conductor, if you don't know anything about the logs. If your conductor is number one or smaller, if your equipment is 100 amp or less, if you're using an NM cable. When would you use 75? If your conductor is larger than number one, if your equipment is more than 100, 110, 125, 150, and also add, there's another one here, we use it for motors. Motors. We use them 75, we use it for motors. Why motors, guys? Because motors, by default, the lugs on the terminals of the motors are rated for 75. Now, having said that, the rules still the same, guys. In order to use 60, in order to use 60, your conductor has to be rated for 60 or more. In order to use 75, your conductors have to be rated for 75 or more. For example, so Adam, my friend, I have a 4 out you have cable. 4 out you have cable. Which, how much current a 4 out you have cable can carry? His 4 out is a U of cable. You're going to default to where? 195. What happened to Chad's rules? Larger than number one. You have to go to 75. The rules apply after the temperature have been met, guys. Did you guys hear me? If the temperature has been met, your temperature has to be, if the temperature is not here, if your conductor insulation is not under 75, you cannot use 75. Any comments, guys? Any questions about how to use this table? Comments, questions. Now, when would we use the 90 degree? The rating.
We use the 90 degree only if you're direct. In the low voltage industry, 90 degree is only used for directing. 90 degrees only used for directing. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions about using it for directing? Do you, everybody knows how to use this table now? When you test on your mass, so you guys are not going to be, but journeyman, that, these are the rules that you're going to be following. When you size, you sit in your office and you size, these are the rules that you're going to be following. Okay. The logs, if I know, now if, here's an example. If I told you the log is 75 on both sides and the conductor is rated for 75, like THHW. How much current number eight can carry? Number eight can carry 50 amps. If I know that the logs on both sides are rated for 75 and the installation is THSW, which is rated for 75. Any comments, guys, about these rules? One more time before I leave. If you have no idea what the logs are, no idea what the logs are, your default is number one or smaller, 60 degree, 100 amp or less, 60 degree. And then cable, 60 degree. If your logs are, if your conductor is larger than number one, why not or more? Your default is 75. Uh, if your equipment is more than 100, your default is 75. If you are feeding motors, brand circuits or feeders for brand circuits for motors, your default is 75. But one condition when you use 75, can I get you guys to understand what condition is there? The installation has to be rated for what? 75, or you cannot use the 75 altogether. Or higher, or higher, 75 or higher. Now, 90 degree. When would we ever use the 90 degree? Only if we're durating. Only if we're durating. We'll talk about durating in a second. Only if we're durating. Any comments, guys? Any questions about this? So that's how you're going to be using this table. So let's take a, let me get that one here, take a, a snapshot of this. Okay. So now, let's take a couple of examples right into here. So I have my lugs and my conductors and all this good stuff, my temperatures. Okay, I would like you guys uh, to size the following for me. You have no idea what the lugs are, no idea what the lugs are, and I have 50 amp panel. What size conductor? And the conductor is, we're using an amp and amp cable. Size a conductor for 50 amps for an amp cable. What size conductor? What size conductor? 50 amp cable. What would you use? Which column would you go? No idea what the lugs are. 60 degree column. So let's go to 60 degree column. I need how much? 50 amps? It's 50 amps. The conductor is what? Number six. So I need um, three conductors, number six. Done. Done. Now, if I told you. The logs are rated for 75 degree, 75 degree, and the insulation are T H H W. Now you know. Go, go size me the same conductor. Now you're going to go to 75 because you know the logs are rated. Here's my T H H W right here. It's 75, and I my conductor. Then what size conductor do you need for this 50 amp load? Here's my 50 amp. What size conductor? Three conductors, number eight. Do you guys see the difference? Do you see the difference? You came up with completely different answers based on the type of the logs. Now, what's your default if you have no idea? What's my default? The default. No logs, nothing knowledge about what's my default. Here's my default. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Okay, let's take another example here. Very quick. I have 125 amp. Right, this guy is 125 amp, and I need to size the conductor for 125 amp. No idea what the lugs are. 
No idea what the logs are. What's my default? No idea what the logs are. A more than 100 amp, what's my default? 75. So 125, 150, yep, it's 1 out. So this conductor here that's coming to this load is going to be 1 out. Uh, number one out. One out. Now, the question would be what's the insulation chip? T H H W. Okay, let's make it more interesting. Now, I decided to use TW. Who size the conductor for me? I decided to use TW, and the load is 125. Okay, is there any TW here? No, where's the TW? Right here. So now you are forced, you are pushed into the 60 degree column. Hope no choice. Somebody pushed you right into it, regardless of the default. Remember the default? The default, if your conductor is 75, you're pushed. So the size conductor 150, 125. 125, in this case, end up with the same size. We end up with the same size. Right? We end up with the same size. So, but even though that one out will continue, get, but can you see where it's 125? That conductor will continue to give me uh, 125. Any comments, guys? Any questions about sizing using the rules? All the rules that I gave you guys are summarized in 110.14. Let me see for the book. One ten dot fourteen summarize all the rules that we just talked about. Any comments? Any questions? Derating for derating purposes. I have a, a system, a load, and the ambient temperature. Say as the ambient temperature is one hundred and five degree Fahrenheit. And I need to size this conductor T H H N. The insulation is T H H N, which is the most common. Okay. And I need to size um, a conductor based on T H H N rating. So which column are you going to start with? Is my T H H N. And I need to size. Let's just say the conductor. How much current can this conductor? Let's say T H H N number four out. Four out, THHN, 105 for the rating purposes. How much can that guy take care of? Number four, 200 and, is that 60? Mm -hmm. 260. That's how much current this conductor can carry for the rating purposes. And then what you do here is you start multiplying this one by the rating factor. So we can cut it down. You start multiplying it by the rating factor. So that's a few rules. Um, before I let, I'll, so let's, let's talk a little bit about guys, uh, go all the way here. Okay, here we go. Small conductor rule. There is a small conductor rules you must understand. No matter what you do, they call them a small conductor rule. The small conductor rules, guys, are right in here. I'm highlighting for you. Can you see that? Please highlight it. Regardless of what your calculation can come up with. A number 14 conductor shall not carry more than what? 15 amps. And a number 12 conductor shall not carry more than what? 40 amps. And a number 10 conductor shall not be carried and protected by more than what? 30 amps. So these are what we call them. Here's a circuit number one from a panel. Circuit number two, circuit number three. This is my 15 amp, 20 amp, 30 amp. And here's the loads. And this conductor can have cannot be more than 14. So this is the 14. This conductor number 12. This conductor number 10 regardless of any calculation that you come up with any comments guys any questions about the small conductor rule 
For example, uh, number 12 conductor here, look at the number 12, can carry 30 amps. Can I put a 30 amp here on number 12 conductor? No, why not? Because there is a small conductor rule that says number 12, 15, 12, uh, 12 and 10 are so, do you guys know why they use these three wire sizes? These are the most common branch circuit wire sizes in residential, commercial, or industrial in terms of lights and receptacles, right? Look at around you, right above your head. What do you think these lights are powered with? 20 amp, number 12. All the receptacles that you're looking around you, they're all wired by what? 20 amp, number 12. The most, the most used branch circuit, so they want to limit the amount of current that you can pull out of these circuits for safety factors, safety reasons. So are there any, can I, can I pull these amps out of these two circuits even if I want to at 20 or 25 or whatever? Can I pull these? No. For these particular three sizes, for these particular three sizes, the only time you can touch with these ambassador is if you're doing it. There's, like everything else, there's an exception. Exception is motors. The exception for this rule is motors. What does that mean? Well, I can have number 12 here and a 50 amp circuit breaker protecting number 12, and that's okay. We'll go over this one with motors. Just write yourself a note, exception is motors. Any comments, guys? Any questions? For our dwelling, when you deal with dwelling, so to start with the circuit, circuit number one, they're going to be using 15 amp. That would be number 14. Circuit number two, they're going to be using 20 amps. That would be number what? 12. Circuit number three, they're going to be using 13 amps. That would be number 10. These are, can I, can, can I budge out of these? No, these are the small conductor rule, the small conductor rule. And the last circuit, which is not part of the small conductor rule that we use in, in Willings, which is, I would call this circuit, I put right in, in red, it's 40 amp for the range, and that will be number eight, number eight. These are the four circuits Branch circuits that you're going to be using for everything in this residential project. Why am I saying it right now? When you start laying out your power, guys, you're going to be um, and doing takeoff. You guys will be doing takeoff on these projects. You know that, right? You will be taking off these projects. You know what a takeoff is? You know, calculate the material, price, and labor the material. Then you look at your spaghetti that you have done and say, Chad, what size conductor is that? Well, what is it? Is it uh, yesterday we talked about the branch circuit? Is it 15 amp branch circuit? Yep. What conductor is going to be? Number 14. Is it 20 amp circuit? Yep. 12. Is it 30 amp circuit? Yep. 10. Is it a 40 amp circuit? 40 amp circuit? Yes. It's number eight. That's what you're going to do in dwellings. Any comments, guys? Any questions about the small conductor? The small conductor rule? Any comments, any questions about the small conductor rule? So, Matthew, you're going to see me talking about this table all year. You're going to see at any times all the stuff that we're going to do, guys, we're going to hash it multiple times over the year. You understand it now, you're good to go. You don't, you have three more options to understand it with Chad. Here's one today. Two more options for the commercial and the industrial. After that, you're on your own. Okay, I'm going to give you guys five minutes breaks, and then I'm going to do the rating. I'm going to size based on the rating. Okay? Okay, so here's one more table you must know if you're in the electrical industry. This is table 310 of 50 B2A, ambient temperature. So, Adam, if the ambient temperature of your conduits here is other than 30, 
you are a lot you have to derate that's it and typically when we derate um matthew we derate if the temperature is higher because it's higher is worse lower is not a big deal but higher is worse so i'm going to take an example for you guys right here i would like you um to look at number please um if you look at number two can you guys see look at number two conductor number two Theta Chan conductor number two can carry 30 amps. Can you guys see that? For the rating purposes, conductor number two can carry 30 amps. So let's go ahead and um, and and take this. I have um, an overhead friction device and I have a load, and my conductor is number two. Number two. And I need, uh, can you guys tell me how much current number two can carry under normal operating condition? Normal operating condition for number two. Can you guys see that? Number two under normal operating condition. Here's number two under normal operating condition without knowing any lugs or anything. How many amps? Can you guys see that? 60 degree column. 95, right? Normal operating, right? No, see that? Number two, 95. Okay, so number two, 95, normal operating condition. Under normal operating condition, I can get 95 amps. And the next standard over temperature device is what? 100 amps. The next, that's right. The next standard over temperature device is 100 amps. That's if everything is um, under normal operating condition. Under normal operating condition, normal operating condition. Now, let's suppose that this same conductor was installed in an ambient temperature. Let's do a ridiculous, and the installation is THHN, THHN, okay? Now let's say this conductor was installed under really ridiculous temperature, and that's the temperature that the, we installed it in, in a location, not on an 80, 80 degree Fahrenheit, uh, 86 degree, we're installing it at 122 at a temperature of 122. Cool? 122. So Matthew, since THHN is rated for 90 degree, we go to 90 degree. Can you guys see that? What's the rating factor since it's a THHN, THHN, it's rated for 90 degree. The derating factor for 90 degree and the temperature of 122 is what? 0. 0.82. What does that mean, guys? It means that your conductors now have to be derated 82%. 82%. Okay. Now take this, though. This is normal operation. Normal operation. Normal operation condition. Now, when I derate, when I derate, so when I derate, which column am I going to go for number two? When I derate. So how much current for derating purposes? How much current number two can carry? You're going to go to 90 degree column, right? For the rating, 90 degree column. Can you guys see here's 90? Here's number two, 90 degree column. Everybody can see that's 130. Everybody can see it's 130. So under for the rating purposes, it can carry 130 degree. So look what happened. So then number two can carry 130 amps for the rating purposes for derating purposes. And then you multiply this number by 0.82, what do you get? You guys have your calculators with you? Grab your calculators, how much? 106.6 amps. 106.6 amps. 106.6 amps. After I derate it, my derated amps is gonna be 106. And six. Now, can this conductor carry 106 under normal operating condition? Normal operating condition is 60. No. So what do you stick with? 95. The rating is supposed to get you guys lower amps, not higher amps. So after you derate, after you derate, you still the derated ambicity, it's still more than what the conductor can carry under normal operating condition. So what would your answer for this question would be? This one shall not carry more than 95 amps. Shall not carry more than 95 amps. 
Okay, let's take another example. Um, here's a conductor and here's a load, and this conductor is 4 out, and um, 4 out, <coughs> the ambient temperature for 4 out, guys, is, um, and let's just say the ambient temperature is, again, another ridiculous ambient temperature. I'm picking an ambient temperature really ridiculous, 149. Um, okay, under normal operating condition, how much, how much conductor 4 out can carry? Okay, let's go look at this. Normal operating condition for art. Can you guys see that? Now, Matthew, which column are you going to go for the for art? 75, the default. How much current under 75 are we going to carry? 230, okay? So, 230. So, let's go to the 230. So, I can have 230 amp, and my overcapitation device can be 225 amp, not to exceed, okay? 225 amp. 230. That's under normal operating condition. Normal operating condition. When no durating, nothing. Now, under for durating purposes, for durating purposes, guys, let's take four out. For durating purposes, 90 degree. Under 90 degree to durate, let's go four out 90 degree. Here's four out. How much nine for four out can give you under 90 degree for durating? 260. Okay, let's do the math on 260. So we take the 260, 260 multiplied by, here's my rating for 90, 0. 0.65, 0. 0.65. Can you guys do the math for me? 260 multiplied by 0. 0.65. 169 amps. 169 amps. 169 amps. Now, that nice conductor that used to carry now this this will be dropped and what's the new amp will be 169 amps under these circumstances that conductor cannot carry more than 169 amps because the heat generated by the ambient uh, the heat surrounding that conductor 169 Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So that's what your durating, durating is. Then, if this is 169 amps, the conductor cannot carry 160 amps. Then your next standard overcapacitance device will be, uh, well, this is going to go down to 150. So my my conductor cannot be more than 150. More than 150. Actually, the code allows you to go to the next standard. What's the next standard after 1, uh, 169? 175. 175 amp. So now from we went from 225 amp to a 175 amp circuit breaker on this conductor just because the ambient temperature is different. Just because the ambient temperature is different. Any comments, guys? Any questions? comments questions we will be talking about this one for a long time on the, on the, as we go guys if you understand it now the most when i do that one the most important thing adam about the rating is first understand the normal operating condition ask yourself what is the normal operating condition for this cable is it 60 or 75 and then size then go to the derating derate based on sizing if your durate based on size is less than the normal operating condition, you have to use the less. If your durating is more, like this one, more than the normal operating condition, then you have to use the normal operating condition M. The normal operating condition. Any comments, guys? Any questions? So it's really that's that's as easy as as it goes when it comes to the durating. Let me take a capture um, picture of that one. So this table is so important, guys, in terms of durating. Um, okay, so let me let me erase this one and take one more. Just give you. Okay, the way this table works in in a very simple format. If you are using, here you go, if you have a TW here, THW, THH, 
edge n. 60 degree insulation, how do I know? If you guys go to the table, it tells you TW is under 60. 60 degree, 75 degree, 90 degree. Now, suppose, suppose I have a conductor. I have a conductor, just suppose for a second. This conductor is, uh, let's just say this conductor is carrying 100 amp. Can you just think, guys, 100 amp? Just for the end of it, a conductor carrying 100 amp. If this conductor, the one under normal operating condition, normal, normal condition. What's a normal condition? Normal condition, no durating. We're not durating. Normal condition. If this conductor is carrying 100 amp under normal condition, if you decide to use an insulation at 60 degree, now let's just say an ambient temperature, ambient temperature, a ridiculous one, Let's just say uh, Minnesota. Let's just Minnesota. Minnesota, we're here. An ambient temperature, we're right in here. Okay? So 87 to 95. So that's ambient temperature of 92 amps and degree Fahrenheit. 92 degree Fahrenheit. So 92 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, 90 degree Fahrenheit, guys, is right here. So. Look how, how that, if that conductor insulation was TW, then the conductor can carry now how many amps? 91 amps. Take, multiply this number by 100, that will get you 91 amps. If the same conductor, you just went and bought a different insulation, that's it, same size, different insulation. The same conductor and this insulation having to be THW, then it will carry 94 amps. Same size conductor, but a different insulation. THHN, right? THHN, this conductor can carry how much? 96 amps. Can you guys see the difference? Same size conductor can carry different amps based on the insulation that this conductor is wearing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense in terms of derating? That's what derating based on temperature is all about. The idea of temperature, guys, if this room is hot like today, if the ambient temperature is other than 86, and then the conductors, when the conductors uh, carry the current, they generate heat. Now, take it. You have a conduit like this, having conductors inside it. The conductors are generating heat, and the ambient temperature is hot to start with, so now you're trapping heat in the conduits and the ambient temperature is so hot so you can dissipate heat fast enough, then your conductors will be sitting there cooking. So the smarter than Chad years ago said, if you have this situation, you might not have control over the ambient temperature because you can't, you know, uh, you might not have control, but you have control over the size of the wire that you put there. So what do you do? You oversize the wires in these circumstances or you Either you oversize the wire or limit the, the, the load connected to it. How do you limit the load? Instead of putting uh, 20 lighting fixture on this circuit, I can put seven lighting fixture on this circuit. Now we limited the load. That's limiting the load. How about oversizing the conductor? Instead of using the conductors here, number 12, I can use number 10 conductors. Now they're bigger, fatter, they can handle the, the heat better. That's the concept of the rating based on temperature. Any comments, any questions? Now look how even it gets more ridiculous. Now suppose that you went into an ambient temperature of even higher, like in Arizona, say 130 degrees. Now look at this. The same conductor, if the ambient temperature is higher, this can carry 76 amps, this can carry 67 amps, and this can carry 41 amps. And everybody knows where the 41, I'm coming, I'm just multiplying 0.41 by 100, just to make the math easier. You go put the same conductor in Arizona in an ambient temperature that's hot. The same conductor, same insulation, THH, and different temperature. Different temperature. In Minnesota, we can carry 96 amps. You put in Arizona, how much amps you can get out of the same conductor, same insulation? 76. That's the concept of operation of the derating temperature. That's why derating is so powerful. In Minnesota, when, do, when we do ambient temperature, we take 92 degree Fahrenheit. That's the sizing that we size based on. These ambient, ambient temperature are decided by ASHRAE. 
uh, the mechanical uh, guys. So for us, it's 92 degree Fahrenheit. So when we size, we size with 90 degree. It's not a maximum, by the way. It's not a maximum ambient temperature. Like today, 95 or 100 in Minnesota, that's not a maximum. The average over the years, they average them and they come up with an average value, uh, statistical value. Um, so that's how they come up with the ambient temperature for the, the city that you're in. Any comments about this table before I leave it? I want to make sure everybody understands it. Matt, does it make sense? Adam, uh, Derek, does it make sense? Uh, Karen, okay. So that's how you use this table. So let's. Um, so that's the rating number one. Really straightforward in terms of the rating. I'm going to go to the rating. This is the rating based on based on temperature. There's also the rating based on number of conductors. Now there's another table here, guys, for the rating. This one is for high temperature conductor. Very few of you would be able to use that one in your career. So I'm not going to even bother with that. Okay, right here. This is another derating table. Now remember, if the ambient temperature is the same, but we are bundling more conductors. Okay, so let's take an example. I have a conduit here. Conduit. This conduit is three quarter of an inch. E M T, and I pulling. I'm pulling out of it, out of this conduit. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I'm pulling sixteen conductors out of this conduit in three quarter of an inch. If you do a conduit fill, guys, you can fit sixteen conductors. Each one of these conductors is a T H H N um, number twelve. Number twelve. Number twelve theater chat. All of them are current carrying conductors because of harmonics. The neutral, three phase, all of them are carrying current. Why? I'm using them, I'm using these to carry lights in a commercial building. Commercial building, three phase are harmonics. So the neutral are carrying current. So each one of them, including the neutral, is a hot conductor. Each one of them, including the neutral, is a hot conductor. Okay? Now, under these circumstances, how much current, here is number 12, let's, let's uh, say normal operating condition. Normal operating condition is a 20 amp, here is number 12. How much current you can pull out of, out of number 12, normal operating condition? 20 amps. If it's non-continuous, non-continuous 20 amps. Can I pull other than 20 amps from number 12? No, because that's a small conductor. Now, let's just so see what happened under up normal operating condition. Here's up normal operating condition. So, number 12, up normal operating condition. What is an up normal operating condition for number 12? You put that three quarter of an inch and you jammed all these conductors together and you went to this. That would be 20 amps worth of lights or receptacles on that circuit. Okay, so to do that, for 28 conductors, 30 conductors, we're right here. Can you guys see that? What's the derating factor? What's the derating factor? 0.5. So take number 12. How much current on 90 degree Celsius? Why 90 degree? When you derate, you always use the highest temperature that the conductor is rated for, which is 90 degree. How much current? Number 12 can get you under 90 degree. Thank you, 30 amps. Not 20, not 20 like the normal operating condition. Can you guys see it? Number 12 can carry 30 amps, but not under normal operating condition. Normal operating condition, only 20. Abnormal operating condition is derating, 30. So take your 30, multiply it by that 0.5. What do you get? 15 amps. How much current can I pull out of this circuit under these circumstances? 15 amps. What's the circuit breaker that you have to put here? 15 amps. So you went from number 12 pulling at 20 amps. If it's only three hots, 
in a conduit into number sin number 12 if you group it with a bunch of other offenders like it can carry no more than 15 amps so what do you do you put a 15 amp circuit breaker there instead of 20 you pull it and you feed only 15 amp worth of light to receptacle out of it only only 15 amps any comments guys any questions do you see what the rating based on temperatures and bundling is all about? The rating based on bundling. Now, most of us guys, we stay, you know, if you stay within 75%, so suppose that you have only nine conductors here. If you just put nine, then your rating factor is 0.7. So can you guys take 30 times 0.7? What would that be, Darren? Uh, there, 30 times uh, 0.7, 21 amps, okay, then I can use a 20 amp circuit breaker. So if you put up to nine of them in one conduit, you're okay. Look at that, I came up with 21 amp. Can I use 21 out of that conductor even if I want to? No, because why? This conductor is limited to 20 under normal operating condition. Do you see why we, a lot of engineering specs will say no more than nine conductors in a conduit? Especially for grind circuits. This is the rating based on bundling. They call it bundling. Grouping the grind circuits together. Grouping the grind circuits together. The rating based on bundling, grouping the grind circuits together. Any comments, guys, about the rating? Any comments, any questions about the rating? So that's what we do. I can't emphasize when I teach this one, guys. Um, oh, by the way, every ambient temperature, remember the ambient temperature that we, we, we talked about? If I don't know if you guys have seen that one. It says one source for the average ambient temperature in various locations is the Ashery Handbook Fundamentals. So that's a book, Ashery. It's uh, when I attempt to do, those are the HVAC engineers and the mechanical engineers put together a, a handbook because temperature for mechanical engineers is more important, as important if not more than for us. Why? Imagine heating and cooling a building like Dunwoody. Would the ambient temperature be, if this building is in Arizona, when you design a chiller and an handling unit, would that we design it like if it's in Minnesota? Definitely not. So that's why they, when it comes to temperature, the mechanical engineers are the decisive factor in deciding it, because it affects more the equipment much more, twice if not three times more than we do. Heat and cool. What do you do with the building? You cool and heat it. So if the ambient temperature is too hot or too cold, your equipment has to be completely different, higher or lower size. Okay. When I when I do this one, guys, I cannot emphasize enough. When you deal with conductors, and I don't know how how the teachers, guys, that you did, uh, explain it to you, but when I do it for master and journeyman, when they go sit for master exam, that's how the state will test you on. They cannot emphasize the normal operating condition of the circuit. That's the first thing you want to start with. What is the normal operating condition of the circuit? Then you derate. Your derating here must be less than this, or this is the normal operating condition. If I end up like I end up here with 21 amps, can I pull 21 amps out of this circuit? No. Why? Because the normal operating condition by the code is this, based on 60. This is based on small conductor size, and um, and 60 degree column. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments? Questions? about the rating based on temper based on bundling based on bundling bundling means grouping the conductor who cares when we you guys are going to be working for electrical contractors and electrical engineers electrical engineers don't care much about bundling but electrical contractors when you come out of this panel do you think you would put an empty conduit for every circuit if they're not neutral the empty conduit for that you would be completely shocked when they come out of the circuit, they come up with multiple three-quarter inch. The best design when you design, when you build the system, 
When you build a system like this, out of that panel, you come up with multiple three quarter of an inch, multiple. And then you load the three quarter of an inch with nine conductors. Each one of them carry nine conductors, right? Now these nine conductors, I can co-feed number 12. I can feed receptacles and light out of them if they're the same panel. Each circuit will be a hot and a neutral and we can share a neutral between three hots. So each four of them will be carrying uh, three circuits, basically. Hot one, hot two, hot three, phase A, phase B, phase C, and a neutral. Here's three circuits. And the other, so that will leave you with what? From nine. So how many circuits, if I have nine, nine conductors, I need uh, four and four. So that will give you a four plus another four plus, so that will give you a four, four, eight almost. So that will give you four, four, eight conductors and an extra, and an extra conductor. So eight conductors, guys, just to give you an idea what an eight conductor is, you can do with an eight conductors. I don't know if I have a room for this. Eight conductors will give you a, here's a 20 amp circuit. Each will give you six circuits, 20 amp each. What does that mean to you on a three quarter inch? It will give you one, two, three, four, five, six. All these six circuits with their neutral, sure neutral, are in one three quarter of an inch. So how many left in the panel? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine living, eighteen, six of them will be circuits. So one third of the circuit you can you can pull it through a three quarter of an inch. So to pull all these circuits out of this panel, how many how many pan, how many ones do you need if they were eighteen? Three conduit, three quarter of an inch each. Done. With shared neutral. You see how powerful that concept of the rating is when you apply it to the real life installation. Any comments, guys, then this is a normal operating condition. If you decided to, if you bundle them more, 16 of them, which you should not, it's not a good idea to go 16. 16 is too high, you know. If you do 16, then look at, you lost amps. You lost amps. Any comments, guys, any questions about that? Bundling, does that make sense? So what we did, and especially for Derek and, uh, and Matthew, it doesn't make sense because you guys haven't seen the, the rating before. So you take the amp based, strictly based on the conductor insulation when you derate, strictly. What is the insulation says? That's what you get, and you start derating it. When you derate, when under normal operating condition, the temperature of the conductor, the THH and TW is one factor, then you go... The other rules that exceed 100 amp or less, number one or less, 60 degree column. More than 100, more than number one, 75 degree column. Motors, 75 degree column. These are your default, unless they tell you otherwise. What do they tell you otherwise? The lugs on both ends of the conductor are rated. So they talk about, like engineers say, all lugs must be rated for 75 or higher. That's how we cover our bots. Then we size everything by 75. When you go to Michelle Cooley, we're talking about three-phase, though. Three-phase equipment, especially feeders. All lugs must be rated for 75 or larger for all feeders, because feeder is a big deal. When you, when then, if you, if then the manufacturers have to put lugs 75, 75, then you size everything by 75. Size, normal operating condition. The rate. Is a completely based on the temperature of the, the temperature of the conductor. Any comments, guys? Any questions about the rating versus sizing? The rating. So that's my the rating based on ambient, um, based on bundling. Let me take a less ridiculous um, size like this. Okay. And let's just say I have, um, I'm going to take a conduit, it's my conduit, and out of this conduit, I'm going to pull one, two, three, four, five, six, um, let's say six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, eight conductors, eight conductors, each conductors, um, I want each conductor to be number 10. Number 10. Oops. Where did I go? I went too far. 
Right here. Uh, no, not ambient temperature. We don't care about ambient temperature right now. There you go. So, number 10. Number 10. Okay. Number 10. So, under normal operating condition, can you guys tell me what number 10 under normal operating condition? 30 amps. Number 10. Give you 30 amps. That's normal operating non continuous condition, right? From 60 degree column. That's normal operating condition. Now, let's see how much turn this boy. How the whole system will change based on putting eight of them. These are eight. These are eight. Eight of them. So let's draw the system again and see if, how would this affect the operation of this conductor. All of them are T H H N. T H H N. So, Adam, can you tell me how much number ten T H H N can carry under 90 degree column, which is for the, the rating? Anybody has the code? Guys, moving on, please grab your code with you. How much? 40. Thank you. 40 amps. Granted, how much are we limiting it to here because of normal operating condition? 30. Okay, 40. Now, once I have eight of them, eight will put me right in here, and that will give me 70%. So you take that four zero multiplied by 0.7. Equal what? 28. 28 amps. 28 amps. 28 amps. 28 amps. Now, how much current can I get out of uh, this? Is 28 amps. 28 amps. The code allows you to go to the next standard overcompetition device. This is again still number 14, number 10. I'm sorry, number 10. What's the next circuit breaker size? 30. So 30. So what happened? The circuit breaker continued to be 30, but when I size my lights here, each one of these lights is an amp. That will be 28 amps on that circuit. Not 30 amps like it used to be. See how it makes a difference? Now, the overcompetition device continues to be the same because the next standard overcompetition device after 28 is 30. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So that's what you get when you get the rating, the rating based on bundling. The rating based on bundling. Any comments, questions about that? So I can't emphasize one more time before I leave the normal operating condition of the conductor versus the derating condition of the conductor. The derating. Normal operating versus derating. 90 degree will not be used in any secret book for normal operation. You don't use it for normal operation. Only for low voltage, as in 600 volt or less. Only for higher than 600 voltage we use it. 600 volt or less, 90 degree is always used for the rating. Okay, so that's that's what we normally do. And what if you do a goofy stuff? And Chad was goofy, and, and he, I only use number ten. Um, T H W. I would use distance solution. T H W. Okay. Normal operating condition will never change. Can you guys see that? Normal operating condition will never change. But Derek, because we're using T H W, what's the insulation for T H W? Seventy-five degree. How much current that conductor can carry under seventy-five degree? Thank you. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. And can I go to the 90? No, because I'm goofy and I decided to use THW. Okay, now then you do the math of 35 this time 35 multiplied by 2.7. What would they give you, please? 35.7. 
24.5 amps. Now, now your system is completely going to change. Now your system is 24.5. This is number 10. This is 25, the next standard of the computation device. 25. Based on the installation of the conductor. The reason why this is a real life doesn't play a big deal, guys, because we're always indoor, we're using THR channel anyway. That becomes a big deal when you take your conductors outdoor when you're using THW. W is for wet. Every time you see a word W, uh, a letter W in the name of the conductor, this conductor is rated for wet location, outdoor, underground. That's considered wet location. If you don't see a W in the name, this conductor, for the most part, is rated for indoor use, dry and damp location like THR channel. Can you guys see why I went for 75 here versus 90? Because I'm say I'm using it outdoor and I want to do it. You have to use you have to use the 75. A lot of installation now is THF trans slash THW on the same installation. So if you're using it outside, it's THW. If you're using it inside, it's THHF. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So that's basically what the rating is based on bundling and based on temperature. Based on bundling and based on temperature. Let me take a... That's what I wanted to go with you. Click on that one. Take a snapshot of that. I can't emphasize everything that I write here and draw will be on the PDF and the network. So if you want to review it or if you want to do whatever. The last thing I want to do, guys, is that happened in 2011. Um, this little table. If you decided to put a conduit outdoor, so this is how you use this table. Say here's your roof and you decided to put a block here these are my blocks and um, let's say six inch block and you pull the conduit to the top of it can you see that i'm pulling a conduit on a roof i'm putting a block then on a roof then you have to use this table this table says a circular raceway for sunlight, if you put a conduit in the top of a roof, guys, that conduit will be exposed to two, well, three types of, of temperature. One type is the conductors creating their own temperature. The second one is the sun is beating on, on this conduit and heating it. And the second one is the reflected heat from the roof. It hits and it reflects right into the conduit. So the sun is beating on that conduit from the top and also hitting the, the roof and the roof is reflecting the heat and to the conduit. So your conduit is being cooked. The smarter than Chad discovered that in 2008, they say, oh my God, these conductors are getting hot on the roofs of these buildings, commercial building that we are throwing. We need to do something about it. That was came into a believe in, yeah, 2008, that was a change. They added this table. Okay, so what does that mean? Meaning if you put that conduit for your rooftop unit or any equipment on the roof, if you put them, then you have to add more temperature duration. For example, we're in Minnesota, so we are 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's our ambient ambient temperature. Okay, now if you put the conduit outdoor on the roof, not on the walls, not anywhere else on the roof, and you decided to put it on like a block of six inches, where's six inches here? It says three and a half all the way to 12, right? Six inches is right here. Three and a half all the way to 12 inches. That's a range for six inches. Then I need to add how much for my ambient temperature Fahrenheit? Another 30 degree. So that the temperature added. Then plus 30 degree Fahrenheit. Now my ambient temperature in Minnesota has turned into 100 and what are we here? 100, 122 degree Fahrenheit. 
and you go to the temperature derating and you start the rate like we did a minute ago but instead of going to 92 now where do you go to 122 what happened to your conductor then start carrying less and less amps or you start pumping the conductor size bigger and bigger so they can handle this conduct this um this heat any comments any questions about this little table that's called temperature adder only if you're on a roof ambient temperature adjustment for circular raceway exposed to sunlight on or on or above um now now if you decided to just throw it right on the roof look what happened what's the temperature they're going to have 60. If you just decide to throw the conduit right here, here's my conduit, you know, up to, say, an inch and a half. So look what happened. Now 92 degree plus 60 degree, that will get you 152, right? 152 degrees. Did they do it right? 152 degrees. Degree Fahrenheit. Degree what does that tell you? If you have a conduit on a roof, you better raise it up a little bit, at least six inches. If you put it right on the roof, you're going to have a lot of temperature derating. What would that, who cares about these numbers? These numbers means a conductor has to be oversized now. So you could have carried the same load with one out if the load was other than the roof. You put it on a roof, now the conductor might end up two out, three out, just because it's on the roof. Any comments about the rating and the ambicity for conductors? Any comments? So what I was hoping, guys, from this class is, just to wrap up, we went to two tables, right? Let me grab that one and then we'll wrap them up. Um, and I'm, I'm highlighting this so you, you understand the gravity of what we're trying to do here. Check one more time. There we go. So what I um, what I walk you guys through is a couple of tables. The first one is this table. That's for dwelling, and we know how to use it, right? I hope now. Then we went into the bigger table and we specify when under normal operating condition when would you use 60 when would you use 75 and under abnormal operating condition the rating you when would you use 90 it's an abnormal operating condition and we talked about the small conductor rule guys the 15 20 and 30 number 14 12 and 10 for this table then we came over here if you guys remember and we talked about uh, adding the temperature because you throw your stuff on the on the roof, you have to add temperature. Then, if you decided to put more than three conductors in a conduit, you're going to use you're going to do rate based on um, on bundling. Then we went into this table, Matthew, and we said if your ambient temperature is other than 86 degree Fahrenheit, then you have to use this table based on the temperature to do it. Can you guys assure me that? you at least will review that one um this is going to be work in progress guys you're going to be using between these that i walked you through today guys you're going to be sizing for all the commercial industrial project so later on we're going to have a commercial project 4000 amp you're going to go size for 4000 amp which table we're going to use 310 15 b16 cut the 4000 amp into 10 runs 400 amp each and go size your conductors any comments, any questions? Cool. So that's what I wanted to emphasize a little bit. Again, if it's too much for you the first time, guys, we're going to hit this one three times. Three times. By the third time, you better know how to use them really good. So, okay. So what I'm going to do next, guys, I want to give you 10 to 15 minutes, and then I need to keep you up and running, walk you through how to lay out receptacles and circuit today. So we'll give you running, have something to do. Um, cool. So let me give you 15 minutes and I need to take at least half an hour. 
no more than half an hour today and just walk you through how to throw a couple of receptacles and circuit them in CAD. Then you guys can start circuiting, doing power. We don't want to slow down. I'll continue helping with you guys with the setup and so forth. But most of you, um, you know, all the E the power, the E power, um, they're all set. So you can start laying out your receptacle. Let's take 10 to 15.